Hi there, this is Jennifer McGuire. Today I'm playing with a product that's new to me and something I've wanted to use for some time, and that is Brusho watercolor powders or color crystals. This is a really unique product that is really fun and you can get some really cool results. However, if you don't have these powders or you don't think it's something that would interest you, I will mention some other ways to achieve these looks in this video. Now you'll see here I created a bunch of different cards as I was experimenting with this product and I'll show you all the different things. There are many things you can do with the Brusho powders. This is just to kind of give you an introduction to them. You can get a lot of different types of looks. Okay, so let's talk first about this product. This is the set of 12 Brusho color crisp or crystal colors. These I think are made in um, England and they're very high quality. You can get packs with more colors in it, but I thought the set of 12 was plenty. It has a lot of basic colors. It has like a light green, a dark green, a light blue, a dark blue, a brown and a black. It's got a good variety in here. Now you can take the cap off these, but this is extremely, extremely um, concentrated color. So you really don't need to. So what I do, and I've seen others do this too, is I just poke a hole in the top with a paper piercer or a thumbtack, and that's enough to kind of shake the color out. You don't need a lot when you're using this. This is a unique, transparent, highly pigmented watercolor powder. And you can use it to create bursts of colors or just to do a basic watercoloring. And it has a very good degree of light fastness. So if you're one of those who worries about your watercolor fading, fading this is gr um, a great product for you. I quickly want to show you how you can use this powder as regular watercolor. I just shook a little bit onto my craft sheet, added a spritz of water, and there we have a beautiful light blue watercolor. If you want to make it darker, just add another shake of powder. Just a few little crystals are coming out, and that's all you need, and you can make a darker color. You can easily mix different powders to get new colors. You can really control how much you mix, and look at the beautiful results that you get. So these powders are great for just good old-fashioned watercolor, but in today's video I want to focus on some of the fun techniques that you can get because this is in a powder format. So let's first start with coloring in these flowers. I have this new stamp image from Waffle Flower. I thought it'd be perfect for this technique. And I am um, white heat embossing it on watercolor paper. Now I'm using watercolor paper today. I think it, this technique works great on watercolor paper, but I encourage you to try it on other papers because you can get good effects on different papers also. Okay, so what I've done is I have my paper taped down to my board so that it wouldn't warp. I didn't need to do this. And I'm using a brush to t paint in the flower with water, just water. So I filled in the flower with water, a pretty good layer of water. And now I am shaking some of the red powder onto it. And you can see it looks like powder in the beginning, but this powder will slowly kind of burst and fill in the area. Again, I only applied water to the flower area only. So any powder that ends up outside of the water will just sit there dry. And once my flower is completely dry, I can knock off that extra powder. Now remember this powder is super concentrated, so be careful when working with it. You don't want to get it on your clothes or on anything else. This stuff can be a hot mess if you don't kind of keep control over it. But really, if you just poke that little hole in the top, you don't get much powder coming out and you can really control it. Now I'm just using a brush to kind of make sure I filled in all the areas. There were some areas I didn't cover with water that I wanted, but it's best to leave this to dry on your own because the blending effect is really cool if you just leave it be. Now you can add little colors here and there if you want. I'm adding some yellow and a little bit of orange and you can let it mix. But really if you let it do the work on its own, you'll get some great results. And there you can see what it looks like when it dries. And you didn't have to take any time to do the blending because the powders do it on their own. Okay, so let's do another one here. Again, I'm filling in my white heat embossed image with water, just good old fashioned water, a pretty good thick area. So it kind of um, has a nice shine to it after you've filled it in with the water. So you wanna have a good amount of water on there, but stay in the lines. Now this time I'm shaking on the purple. Now you'll notice here that the purple actually has little red and blue crystals in there. And when they hit the water together, you get this beautiful purple. Now towards the top of the flower, I'm adding some of the turquoise, and you can really see like the color bursting here. If you went to this right away with a heat gun, you can keep those little dots of color, and it will give you that in the final result. But I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry on its own, and it will do some fun blending between the colors. So you can really get different effects based on how much water you use. If you let it dry on its own, or you hit it with the heat gun, there are many things you can do. 
This is one of those products that you really want to experiment with. So if you're one of those people who likes to play around with products, this might be one for you. And check out the cool results you get with, on that flower there. It'd be great for a night sky. Okay, I wanted to next show you the leaves that I did on these cards. I just wanted to show you this very quickly. I quickly covered those leaves with some water, and I'm going to cut these out so it doesn't matter. And I'm shaking on the leaf green color. Now this has like some bold green and some yellow powders in there together. And when it hits the water and mixes, you get this beautiful leaf color. I decided to spray more water on this and help it move around. And look how intense that color got. Now I decided that was a little intense for me, so I'm just taking a dry cloth and dabbing some of it away, and you can see how you can get some really cool effects with this. So if you put down color and you think it's too dark, that's okay. You can kind of wipe some of it away or add more water so it fades off. You can even dab a lot of the color in. Look at that soft, beautiful color you get instead. So this is one of those products you do want to experiment with. Now if you don't have watercolor powders, you can do all the techniques I'm doing today, but drop in little drops of color with a regular watercolor and a paintbrush. Just fill your flowers with water, then add a little bit of color with a paintbrush and let the water do the work for you. Okay, so now that we've colored in some images with these powders, let's do some fun backgrounds. You see those little splattered backgrounds there? Let's play around with the powders to create these. So I have a piece of watercolor paper and I'm just doing some light spritzes of water in three little areas to, to the top, to the left, and to the bottom. So there's just a little bit of water there. Now I'm coming in with the turquoise powder. I'm holding it up pretty high and lightly tapping it so not much lands on the paper. Now anywhere there is water, you'll see that it kind of starts to spread. Anywhere there isn't water, it'll just sit there and we can brush it away later. Now I'm going to zap this with my heat gun right away so that it doesn't spread too much. I want to keep this kind of splotchy looking, I guess you would say. So I am heating it up so it doesn't spread on its own. And there you can see the fun background you get there. This is just a kind of an artsy technique, which I sometimes have trouble with, but I think these powders are fun to use, so I'm kind of embracing it here. Now this time I'm going to use less water to see what happens. So I'm misting my paper in three different areas, but I'm gonna dab away some of it. So there's just a light bit of water in three spots, and then I'm going to add the powders. So you'll get less of the bursting effect or of the spreading effect. So it looks more like a mist in the background. So I'm just tapping on a little bit of the turquoise there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and heat set that so that it doesn't spread. Now since I have put the water down and then added the powder to it, it's going to be very vibrant in the background. You can see how bright that color is. If you want to soften it while it's still wet, you can dab it away with a dry cloth. And you're, there you can see the results on the left. Okay, now there is another way to use these powders. In the, these first two examples, I put the water down, then I put the powder. This time I have dry paper. I'm dropping a few pieces of the powder. You can see there's very little on my paper, very little at all. So I'm putting the powder onto dry paper and I'm misting on top of that. And watch what happens, this is really fun. When you mist it, it starts to spread and you get a lighter effect, but it's really beautiful. Now you could get really crazy backgrounds if you use more powder and more water and more colors. And a lot of people have been doing those techniques on blogs and such. I have a hard time with a lot of bold craziness going on in the back of my cards, so these subtle effects work best for me. And there you can see the results of adding the powder to the paper first and then adding the water on top of that. Okay, so before we move on to some other background ideas at the end of this video, I just want to show you how I wrapped up these cards. I stamped uh, sentiments from a waffle flower stamp set with black ink, and then I cut out those leaves that I created earlier and tucked them behind my little flowers here. Then I went ahead and put this on a four inch by four inch note card. So these are tiny little cards and I like that the flower hangs off the side, but this will still fit into my envelope. So here are the final results with these first three examples. You can see the bold color and the splashy background. And remember, you could use watercolor and flick the color on if you'd rather, or if you don't have the powders. Okay, so now I wanted to show you another background technique, something softer that you can see here. I created the flower the same way that I did earlier in this video, where I painted the flower in with water and added the pigment or the uh, powders and let it dry. Once it was dry and I completely wiped away all the excess powder, I'm going and adding some water around the image. And I'm doing little areas at a time. So towards the bottom here, I've added just some water, painted it on there. 
Now I have put some of that turquoise powder onto my craft sheet and I'm picking up some of that color with my water. Now you need very little powder for this to get this soft blue color. But see here, you can use these powders to create watercolor backgrounds as you would with regular watercolors. But since the powder is pretty easy to control, you can make it so that you get super soft or you can add more powder to get super vibrant. So here I'm just putting down lots of water on the paper and then bringing the blue and kind of letting it blend on its own. You can see this blends very easily. I do encourage you to use watercolor paper for this technique, but also you can experiment with these powders with other papers. Another fun thing that I could have done here was just paint with water around the flower, then just go ahead and put the turquoise pigment right onto that wet paper and I would have gotten a really bold background. But I really wanted to keep this soft and kind of blend it out. So I'm just using the powders as I would a normal watercolor medium. So once it dried, I just stamped a greeting with some soft blue ink in the corner and I kept that very simple. So that's a one layer card there. Okay, so as I mentioned, I was experimenting. I'm gonna throw one more technique at you. There are so many more things you can do with these powders, but here's one more. This is the kind of crazy background that you can get with these powders. I'm not great with these crazy backgrounds, but I wanted to show you one of the examples. So I have heat embossed my flower on here with white powder, taped it onto a board so it doesn't warp. I sprayed it generously with water, just covered the whole paper with water, and now I'm adding a variety of powders right onto the water. I could have added the powders first and then sprayed it with water, but I think I get better results this way. Now this is going to look like a hot mess and you'll want to pitch it as I did. And I set this aside thinking I would never use it. But if you leave it be and let it do its thing, it will really be cool. I tend to add more water to it so that it kind of blends more. You can add, not add more water to it and get really cool kind of splotchy backgrounds if you want to. I decided to keep this very simple and I also white heat embossed the word congrats on there and you can see the really fun background you get with these. So you can really experiment with these powders to create fun backgrounds and unique coloring. So there you have a very fast look at the watercolor powders that are really popular right now. There are a few brands out there but this one I think is a really good one. Now if you are interested in these products or these fun new stamps from Waffle Flower, I have links below in my YouTube description so that you can find it at multiple sources. Or you can go over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com where I'll have a lot more information, links to some other fun videos, and also a giveaway. I appreciate you watching as always, and I hope you'll come back soon.